Okay, experiment number three. Now we'll look at horizontal translations and reflections. Again, we're starting with y equals x squared. You should probably know this one by heart now. We tend to use it a lot in math because it's easy to draw. Let's start by moving the graph two units right. Here we go. Negative two, four becomes zero, four. Negative one, one becomes one, one. Zero, zero becomes two, zero. 1, 1 becomes 3, 1, and 2, 4 becomes 4, 4. That is the graph shifted to the right two units, and we would write this by replacing x with x minus 2. So that's going to be y equals left parentheses x minus 2, right parentheses squared. Okay. Now we reflect the graph horizontally over the y-axis. That means we take every x value and make it the opposite. So if it's positive, we make it negative. If it's negative, we make it positive. So let's go through our points and do that. 4 comma 4 would become negative 4 comma 4. 3 comma 1 would become negative 3 comma 1. 2 comma 0 would become negative 2 comma 0. 1 comma 1 would become negative 1 comma 1 and 0 comma 4 would still be 0 comma 4. So there's our new parabola. And then how would we do that? Well, when we do a reflection over the y-axis, we're actually replacing x with negative x. So we would have y equals left parentheses and then instead of x there, we're going to have negative x. Then everything else is the same, so minus 2, right parentheses, squared. Now again, you might be like, oh, I'm not sure I believe that one. So let's go ahead and take a look in Desmos, make sure that that works. So the first thing we did was move the graph to the right, too. That's left parentheses, x minus 2, right parentheses, squared. And that looks good. The next thing we did was replace that x value with negative x instead. And you can see that that does have the effect of reflecting it over the y-axis, so our graphs look correct. Okay, our next half of this experiment is to do the reflection first and then move the graph two units right. Well, the reflection here is going to be a little bit boring because this parabola, y equals x squared, is already a perfect reflection over the y-axis. So every point is essentially moving to the opposite side. Negative 2, 4 moves to be positive 2, 4. Positive 2, 4 moves to be negative 2, 4. 1, 1 moves to negative 1, 1, and vice versa. So our reflection over the y-axis is actually exactly the same as y equals x squared. You may have heard this kind of graph called an even function before. This is a property of an even function that it reflects perfectly over the y-axis. So this graph, if we do that replacement, we're replacing x with negative x, and so this would be y equals left parentheses negative x right parentheses square, but that's really just y equals x squared, because negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Okay, now we move this graph two units right. So I'll take every point and move it two units right. So negative two, four, I'm gonna move to zero, four. Negative one, one, I'm gonna move to one, one. Zero, zero, I'm moving to two, zero. One, one, I'm moving to three, one. And two, four, I'm moving to four, four. Here's that new graph. If I write the new equation, what I'm doing here is replacing x with x minus 2. So now I have y equals, and then the x in x squared gets replaced with x minus 2 inside of parentheses, and that's squared. Let's see if they're the same. And look at that, they're not the same. So again, the order here actually does turn out to matter. Now one thing that's a little hard to figure out here is what's actually happening first. And in order to see that, you need to go to the first example, that y equals left parentheses negative x minus 2 right parentheses squared, and we need to actually factor the negative 1 out 
inside the parentheses, and then you'll be able to see it a little bit better. So this equation is actually y equals left parentheses negative 1, left parentheses x plus 2, right parentheses, right parentheses squared. So inside that big set of parentheses, you have negative 1 times the quantity x plus 2, which means that what you're doing is first a horizontal reflection, and then after that, you're moving the graph to the left too. In the second equation, all you're doing is moving the graph to the right too, because that first reflection didn't matter at all. So did the order matter in this experiment? Yes. And we still want to do the reflection before the translation. Okay, one final experiment here. Let's look at horizontal stretches and vertical reflections together, just to kind of mix up the horizontal and vertical. We're starting with the graph of y equals x squared, and we're going to start by stretching the graph by a factor of 2 horizontally. So we're taking every x value and doubling the x value. For example, the point 2, 4, if I double the value of 2, that would give us a value of 4, 4. The point 1, 1, if I double the value of 1, that gives us the point 2, 1. 0, 0, if I double the value of 0, that still gives me 0, 0. Negative 1, 1, double the value of negative 1, and that gives me negative 2, 1. And finally, negative 2, 4, if I double the value of negative 2, that gives me negative 4, 4. And so I have a new, much wider parabola than I had before. And what would be the equation for that? Well, remember that these happen a little bit counterintuitively. So instead of replacing x with 2x, we actually replace x with 1 half x, the reciprocal. And so this would be y equals left parentheses 1 half x right parentheses squared. And if you want to double check that, we certainly can. We can run over to Desmos really quick and make sure that this is in fact what we think it is. So we'll do 1 divided by 2 x squared, and that does give us the horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is reflect the graph vertically over the x-axis. So when we reflect that graph over the x-axis, we're taking every y value and making it opposite. So we'll take the point negative 4, 4, and make it negative 4, negative 4. The point negative 2, 1, becomes negative 2, negative 1. 0, 0 is still 0, 0, because when we negate 0, it's still 0. 2, 1 becomes 2, negative 1. And 4, 4 becomes 4, negative 4. So here's our reflection. How would we write that? Well, vertical reflection is applying a negative to the outside. So we'd have y equals a negative on the outside, left parentheses, 1 half x right parentheses squared. And you could actually write this a little bit differently. You could uh, do that squaring. So just remember that this is like a negative and then 1 half x times 1 half x. So this is really going to be y equals negative 1 fourth x squared with no parentheses involved anymore. We've done a lot of these now. So why don't you guys go ahead and work your way through this and just come back when you're finished. Okay, and we're back. I've gone ahead and drawn both of these just to make this a little faster. The first thing we do is reflect the graph vertically over the x-axis, which gives us y equals negative x squared. The next thing we do is stretch the graph horizontally by a factor of 2. That means we're taking every x value and multiplying the x values by 2, which widens the graph. What we're doing to the equation is replacing x with 1 half x. So instead of y equals negative x squared, we'll have y equals negative and then in parentheses 1 half x and then close the parentheses and square it. And we know from the previous problem that that simplifies to be y equals, and then no parentheses, negative 1 fourth x squared. So did the order matter in this experiment? No, it actually doesn't. And in fact, the two equations come out to be exactly the same. And we will find that in general, the horizontal transformations and vertical transformations can be done all together without any effect to the graph. So in general, the order seems to matter. It's when you're mixing 
translations and transformations that the order matters. We need to do the reflections, stretches, and compressions first. And then after that's done, we do our translations, which are the up, down, left, and right. It's kind of like the order of operations, actually, because we're doing everything involving multiplication or division first, and then we're doing the things that involve addition and subtraction second. For example, if we want to show how to graph g of x equals 2 f of x plus 3 from the graph of f of x, what order should we perform the transformations in? Let's say that f of x is x squared, that same graph we've been doing for a while. The first thing we should do is the part that's multiplied, so that would be the 2 f of x. This results in a vertical stretch. We just take all of our y values and multiply them by 2. So this first graph is just 2 f of x. Now we'll go ahead and do the plus 3 part. We need to move the graph we have up 3 units. So I will take 0, 0 and move it up to 0, 3. 1, 2 and move it up to 1, 5. Negative 1, 2 and move it to negative 1, 5. And then we've got points that are so high we can't actually see them on our axes. So I'm just going to sketch from there. That gives us the graph of g of x equals 2 f of x plus 3. And if you want to check that, we can just go over to Desmos and do that without even getting the formula for these. I'll just make my first equation f of x equals x squared. And now I'll write out g of x equals 2 times f of x plus 3. And you can see that we do get the graph that we had in our notes. In this next problem, we want to show how to graph h of x equals f of left parentheses 2x minus 4 right parentheses. What order should we perform those translations and transformations in? Well, when we have an inside that involves both multiplication and subtraction, we have to be a little careful. Let's write this with the 2 factored out on the inside. So this would actually be h of x equals f, left parentheses. I'm taking out the 2 now, another left parentheses. So if I take the 2 out of 2x minus 4, I have 2 times left parentheses x minus 2, and then a right parentheses, right parentheses. Now I can clearly see the two steps. The multiplication step is that I'm uh, using a times 2 on the inside, and then I am doing the x minus 2 part. So it's really like we're going through a set of replacements. We're replacing x first with 2x, and then we're replacing that x with x minus 2. So it's kind of a two-step process here. It's a double composition of functions, as a matter of fact. So if we start with x squared, the first thing we're going to do is replace x with 2x. That means we are squishing the graph horizontally, compressing it horizontally by a factor of 2. We still have 0, 0, but 1, 1 would become 1 half 1, and 2, 4 would become 1, 4 negative 1, 1 would become negative 1 half 1, and negative 2, 4 would become negative 1, 4. So we've got our squished graph here. So that would be simply f of 2x, and now we're going to do the movement to the right by two units. So now we pick up each of these points, 0, 0 becomes 2, 0, 1 half comma 1 becomes 2 and a half comma 1, negative 1 half comma 1 becomes 1 and a half comma 1, 1 4 becomes 3 4, and negative 1 4 becomes positive 1 4. When we do this, we've actually done f of, the 2 is still there, and the x gets replaced by x minus 2, which is the same thing as f, left parentheses, 2x minus 4, right parentheses, if we do the distribution. You're probably thinking it's a good idea to check that, and let's go ahead and do that. We're starting with the graph of f of, that's a left parenthesis, 2x. And you can see that that does compress the graph by a factor of 2. And then 
we're replacing that x with x minus 2. So uh, that's the same thing as 2x minus 4. So let's just make sure that looks like it's moved to each other right, and it has. So let's just recap. In general, you first want to do the transformations that involve multiplication or division, and then the translations, which are the ones that involve addition and subtraction.